Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In the last video, uh, one, of, one user commented that it wasn't really clear for him what could be the application uh, in an architectural world of uh, the algorithms on which WASP, WASP is based for. So in order to make it clear once and for all that WASP can have architectural applications, I decided to make a tutorial in which we're gonna be using uh, not any more geometric primitives, but really parts that are nothing else than architectural elements. So we are going to be exploring in this tutorial this aggregation composed of three parts, a slab, a column, and a stair. And we're going to be looking at how we can compose these parts in a variety of ways using a method called uh, aggr rule aggregation grammars. And what uh, rule grammars allow us to do is that will allow us to have more control on the way in which different parts can be connected to each other in order to make sure that the final result is made of parts that are connected in a coherent manner. Let's get started. If you download the Rhino file that you can find in the description uh, of this video, you will find uh, three components which are already prepared for you. Uh, a simple slab, a four-step stair, and a column. And you can see that already each of them has predefined connections. And so we're gonna use this predefined connection and part to set up our parts. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore how by using uh, rule grammars, we can control the fact that the the stair can connect just at this point, the column can connect just at this point, and so on. And we're gonna do that not anymore using types, but rather space, we're gonna again use types, but instead of creating connections between, con creating rules between connections on the same type, what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify exactly which type can connect to which other type. So it's an in-between approach between writing all the rules and using the rule generator to generate everything. And I believe it's the most uh, easier to use and to control approach as well as the one that offers the maximum, the highest level of flexibility in the, WASP, the user's WASP. Let's get started by going to Grasshopper. And we're gonna have to create uh, our three parts. Let's start with the slab. The slab is a little bit more complex and because it has more connections. And what we are gonna be doing is we are gonna import the connection in separate groups in order to assign them different types. What we are gonna start with is we're gonna start with a geometry component. And in this geometry component, we're gonna right click, set one geometry and set our part. We can then hide the part in Rhino. And then we're gonna start by creating a point component point component where we're going to right click set multiple points and we're going to pick the four points that sit at the top of this lab so one two three and four and right click and then we're going to get a curve component i'm going to right click set multiple curves and we're going to select the curves in the same order as the four points we are gonna then bring, go to elements and bring a WASP connection from direction. We're gonna connect the geometry, the centers, the up directions, and then we're gonna specify a, a type. And so since this is gonna be our slab, we're gonna create a panel and we are gonna call this slab, slab top. And we're gonna connect this to the type. We can then select this three parts, leave the geometry out, so this three, and we can copy paste them and move them down. And now we're going to import the four connections at the bottom of the slab. So we're going to right click on the point, set multiple points, and pick one, two, three, and four, and accept. And then select the curves and right click, set multiple curves, one, two, three, and four, and accept. And this time we're gonna change the type from slab top to slab bottom. And accept. We are gonna then get this, this and copy it one more time. And this time we're gonna connect, select the connections that sit on the sides of the slab. We're gonna right click on point, set multiple points, and we're gonna pick one, two, 
3 and 4 and accept with right click and right click set multiple curves with a 1, 2, 3 and 4 and accept. Great, now we have all our connections here. We can create a merge component to have them all in one. And now we're going to go on and create our part. We're going to go to parts, get basic part. We are going to name it and so we're going to name it slab. We are going to assign the geometry and that's going to be our geometry. And then we're going to assign from the merge component our connections. And there we go. We have our first part set up. Let's go on, move a bit lower. And we're going to create our second part. And our second part is going to be quicker as it has only two connections. We're going to create a geometry component. Right click, set one geometry and pick our stair and then we can click on the stair and hide it. And then with this time we're going to import both connections at the same time. We're going to bring in a point, right click, set multiple points and we're going to pick the bottom point first and then the top point and then right click to accept. And then we're going to bring a curve component, right click, set multiple curves, bottom curve, top curve and accept. And so once again, we're going to bring a connection component, which we're going to set a geometry, our centers, our up. And so in this case, what we want to do is we want to assign two types of connections. So this is going to be called step bottom and this is going to be called step top. But what we can do is instead of creating two separate components as it's just two connections, we can simply create a panel, right click on it to uncheck multi-line data and provide the two different names. So the first connection was the bottom, so we're going to say step bottom. And then we're going to go to the next line and go to step top. And connect this to T. So now you see that we created two connections and each of them, the first one will have a step top and the second one we have a step bottom. As we have just two connections, we can directly go on and create our part. We go to WASP, basic part. We are going to name this step. Connect the geometry. And connect our connections. And then we can just go on and copy paste this whole group and move it low. And we're going to do exactly the same for our column. We're going to start by right clicking on the geometry and saying set one geometry and picking our column. We can then hide the column in Rhino. And then we're going to go to the points and right click, set multiple points, pick the bottom point first and then the top point and accept and do the same for the curves. Bottom curve, top curve, accept. And we're going to change the types now to column bottom and column top. And lastly we are going to change the name to column. Perfect, now we set up our three parts. And what we want to do is we want to merge them together in order to have them all in one list. We create then a merge component and we're going to go get our first part, so our get our slab and bring it down. We're going to get our step, connect it, and we're going to get our column and connect it. Great, so here we have our three parts. And now we will proceed uh, in the same way in which we proceed uh, the other time. We're going to go to aggregation and get a stochastic aggregation. We are going to connect part to part. And then we're going to specify that, for example, we want 120 parts as a start. 
And then as we said for the rule, let's try to use again the rule generator. We go to rules, rule generator, bring it in, connect our parts, connect our rules. And lastly, we create our button for resetting. Okay, as our aggregation is set up, let's go on and get a get part geometry component to see what happened. So what happened is, well, something quite nice looking, a little bit of a dash tail vibe here. However, it's not what we were saying. So our slab all of a sudden gets flipped in space and gets created as a get becomes a wall and then we see that columns connect to steps and steps are connecting to columns but in, in to slabs but in the wrong place and then we have steps connecting to steps and then to columns so that's very chaotic and the way in which we reduce the the complexity and the chaos present in the in the aggregation in the last element was to set using a toggle to force the rule generator to create to use types. And now if I reset, we see that this is again, it's not really working. And it's not really working because if you see, we have, we don't really have types that are shared across different geometries. So what you see that happens is that we just get slabs because labs can connect to each other, but we're never gonna get that. So we need a more advanced approach. And the more advanced approach is, we can be done by first of all, deleting this toggle. And secondly, using the last input in the rule generator, which is called a, a rule grammar. We're gonna create a panel. We're gonna again right click and uncheck multi-line data so that every line becomes uh, uh, in, uh, pers uh, simplified data entry and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click we're gonna click on the panel and we're gonna start writing our grammars our grammars are written in the form so we're gonna specify the type of the part to be already placed and then the type of the connection that has to be placed next for example if we look at our so I'm gonna for a moment hide our result if we look at our connection, at our aggregation here, what do we see? So the first thing that we're gonna see is that this lab top type of connection will connect only to the column bottom. So let's go on and start adding that grammar. So we're gonna say slab top, and then we're gonna create a, a larger than symbol that kind of like making it look like an arrow and then we're going to say column uh, oops bottom let's try to connect this there you see that we just get four rules so we can maybe create a panel to see the rules We just get four rules and these four rules are connecting this bottom connection of the column part to all the four of them. If I visualize my result and I reset now, you see that what happens is of course I get my four columns and my slab, but the aggregation gets kind of stuck because, well, after it's done that loop, as we said, rules, grammars in the same way as rules are directional. So it's not able to grow anymore. If we wanna grow more, we can add the next step. And the next step is gonna be that the top of each of this column should be allowed to connect to the bottom of this lab. Let's go on and just go to the next line and type column top. And then we make a larger than sign, slab, sorry, bottom. So now you see that we start having more rules and if now I reset, okay, sometimes it's not gonna work because if it's gonna start with the step, there's gonna be no rule for now. But now you see what happens. Oops, I think we did a mistake. 
before. And exactly, yeah. In the slabs, the slab side, we didn't change this. So if you go back to when we define the connections for the sides, we didn't change the type, which should be changed to slab side. Okay, sorry about that. Now if I reset, I'm building towers. As these are oriented in a way that they can always stack only in a closed loop, we are creating uh, towers, which is, well, cool, but a little bit limited. That's why we have the, the stair component. So the step component will allow us to break out of this vertical growth and try to grow also horizontally. How does this uh, enter in our aggregation? Well, what we see is that this step can connect to the side of the slab. Not really in the best place as you will land on the column, but for the current purpose, we are not really concerned with this. Let's add the grammar. And the grammar is gonna be slab side to step bottom. Let's reset again and see what happens. What happens? It happens that from each of this lab we get created steps and so now we get this growing tower with the slabs. But now if we want to grow the steps more we should do two things. First of all, we should allow the steps to connect to themselves. And we are going to do that by writing that the step top can connect to the step bottom. Let's test this now. And we see that now our stairs are growing a little bit more crazy. So they grow out much more. And then lastly, we want to also allow the ending of the step component to reconnect to a slab. So we move in a certain direction and then we add a new slab. And to do that, we are going to say step top is allowed to connect to slab side. Let's now reset. And here we go. Now we are actually starting to create the complex spatial um, aggregation that you saw in uh, in the video I was showing you at the beginning. Of course, what we can do now is we can try to reset, we can add more parts and start creating much more complex structures, as well as you can start experimenting with more complex steps or steps with longer um, steps and so on. We can maybe create a custom preview Let's make it concrete in a good old Maison Domino style. And then we can again shift as always to Arctic mode and see a little bit what we created. Cool. So as you can see, WASP is a tool that can be very easily uh, applied to a variety of systems. And so not only pure geometric shapes, but also all kind of design systems that are composed of parts that can be combined in affiliate number of ways. And what you could do further on on this file is you could play with adding more elements. And for example, you could start adding a facades or you could start making longer staircases or staircases that connect in a different way. You could uh, add a uh, a U-shaped staircase and so on. You could explore different ways. And all you have to do is always to specify for all this this uh, elements their their connections with a specified type and then write your own grammar or how those sh should connect. Great, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did because I think this is really fun. And uh, if you have any questions, just write in the comments. I'm going to be happy to answer you and clarify any doubts. Uh, if you're liking the videos and you want to keep updated, just subscribe to the channel. And for now, thanks for watching and see you the next time. Bye.